As we see reopenings and then reclosings around the nation, we should remember that some of the essential workers, their businesses never closed and they had to figure out how to be safe while on the job. There's a gentleman who is trying to help them do that as well. That is Tony Matarera. He is back to work after COVID founder. He's joining us from San Diego, California. And Tony, you, you have a construction company. And so that falls into this category of folks who have been working. And so tell us how this this uh, effort came about where you're trying to essentially share what you have learned about helping keeping workers safe here. Sure. Um, as you mentioned, um, I own a construction company. And during that time, for 15 years, we uh, did mold remediation. And mold remediation uh, remediates the exact same particulate size as the virus, the 0.3. And so when this all started, I was sitting on my couch going, oh my, look at that. It's the same particulate size. And actually protection against it is very much the same protocol as mold. So for the last three, four months now, I've been waiting in suspense for really someone to figure out and to instruct business how to protect themselves in the six foot infectious zone. In other words, the same zone that my mold workers worked in uh, because there is a protocol for it to occur. I'm muting myself there. Do you have um, you know, clients or colleagues with whom you're sharing some of what you're doing to get through this and get people back to work? Well, um, we were more self-actualized in the sense that we understood what it was that we needed to do. Um, there are people called industrial hygienists. Industrial hygienists write protocols for, for noxious environments. In, in the first case, mold. In the second case, I have a, um, a protocol written specifically for the virus for my company, which allows my workers to work shoulder to shoulder and work even amongst people who are infected without, uh, without them in fear of getting the virus themselves, much the same way that infectious uh, nurses and frontline personnel uh, work uh, at their jobs. Tony, masks have become somehow a political issue in this country. So when you think about the base information and knowledge that people do have, right, employers um, are not, it's not for lack of knowledge is my understanding. It seems to be a deliberate choice uh, whether folks want to maintain their personal liberties or, or however else you want to justify it. Or have you been having any of those kinds of difficult conversations with perhaps employers or kind of a company cultures where there seems to be clashes internally? Well, it's interesting. In my world, uh, the mask that you refer to, which is a cloth mask, is a, is a great instrument to use when you social distance. In the world to which I'm engaged in, and that's that infectious zone, there's only one mask that is recognized that works, and that is the N95 mask. For a very long time, <clears throat> the government would not put out any information regarding the N95 mask because it was in direct conflict you know, to what the medical community needed, and rightfully so. Uh, but now, and very interesting, without any fanfare, without very many articles, we actually stumbled across it ourselves within the last month, um, the CDC has approved the use of alternate N95 masks, um, those that are equivalent made in other countries. The easiest one and probably one that you might recognize is the KN95 which comes from China, which there are many, many, many manufacturers of. So once you recognize that your work requires you getting into the infectious zone, you getting close to one another, there is no other alternative except the use of an equivalent of an N95 mask. So, so yes, we're at the next level where we're, we all are having this issue with actually putting a cloth mask on to properly protect yourself in a close environment actually requires a very specific mask. And that would be at this point for the worker, a KN95 or some other equivalent mask made in a foreign country. So Tony, would that be sort of your top tip to employers and employees at this point? And, and does that tip go for whether you're outside at a construction site or in an office or any other working environment? Well, interesting that you say it that way. Like I have friends 
that fly. And when they fly, I tell them to get themselves an N95 mask or a KN95 mask, an equivalent mask. There are only two things that will protect you when you are in an infectious environment. That's the mask and that's eye protection. So if you're going to fly, you use a KN95 mask, an equivalent, and you wear good eye protection. If I'm in a plane, I'm wearing goggles because you're just too close. There's no way to control anything. Now, if you just take that small idea that if you were to fly, you put on a mask, you put on the goggles, you don't touch your face, you don't touch your eyes, you get off the plane, you take the stuff off properly, and you clean yourself, and you have successfully kept yourself from getting an infection, even though everyone around you could have an infection, you can do that at work. There are protocols. Industrial hygienists will write these protocols. Businesses need to embrace these protocols. And most of all, we need to start to get a larger supply of these masks. We need to start buying them. We need to start stockpiling them. We need to start doing the same thing that the medical community is doing for their people. We need to stock up on these masks because when the second, if, and, and let's hope it doesn't happen, but when the second wave comes, these things are going to be our main line of defense. Tony, thank you so much. Tony Matarera is the founder of the Back to Work After COVID a sort of educational initiative, as he has been sharing with us, and the owner of a construction company joining us from San Diego. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you all. Have a nice day.